Good afternoon, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for your second video blog of the day for August 18th, 2014, around 4.45 p.m. in the afternoon in Bell Lake, Massachusetts. Another nice and sunny day. Highs in the mid-70s, low humidity, but we're getting to have the fuel fall a little bit. Some leaves are changing. Some leaves are falling off the ground, on the ground, and... I think there could be an early fall and winter up around here. Some news to report, Me TV has announced that they're going to be showing reruns of the classic TV kids sitcom Saved by the Bell, which ran on NBC in the early 1990s on Sunday mornings from 10 to noon time beginning in September. Saved by the Bell was, a, was one of the most famous kids shows of all time for like teenagers and it was real popular. And it's been on reruns for many years on several different cable networks. So this is a big deal for MeTV to broadcast these reruns. And that's about it for the news. My next subject is about one thing in Major League Baseball that's been declining for years and years and years. It's about if baseball is ever going to have another 300 game winning pitcher. And, and it's very difficult these days because... Many pitchers do not do complete games anymore. They don't even last nine innings and stuff like that. And in the history of Major League Baseball, only 24 pitchers have achieved 300 or more victories. The first pitcher to do that was Pud Gavin in 1888. And then for the next like close to 30 years, several famous pitchers reached the 300-game milestone. Cy Young, Walter Johnson, Glover Cleveland Alexander, Kid Nichols, Tim Keith, John Claxton, Eddie Pat Plank, Charles Radburn, and Mickey Welch were the first few pitchers to accomplish this feat back in the late 19th century and earlier 20th century. Back then, a lot of these pitchers would maybe throw every two, three, four days. They would complete all their games. And it was during this era where it was the dead ball era which favored, favored the pitchers. There was a lot of great pitching performances and stuff like that. And pitchers were, were used to go nine innings and stuff. But by like the mid-20s, the game of baseball was changing. It wasn't favoring the pitchers as much as it was favoring the hitters and through a, like a stretch of close to 50, close to 60 years from between 1924 through 1982, only three pitchers in Major League Baseball achieved 300 wins. Lefty Grove, well, well in spawn, an early win. And this was because of like the pitchers, like the um, pitching staff were now becoming, adding an extra pitch, four-man rotations, and sometimes... They were starting to have relief pitching was coming in little by little, and plus the ballparks, they were moving into better ballparks. It was continuing to favor the pitcher and stuff, and a lot of people said by the early 80s, they probably would not have another 300-game winner, but from 1982 through 1990 was a lot of pitchers reached 300 wins. Gaylord Perry, Steve Carlton. Tom Seaver, Phil Nequo, Don Sutton, and Nolan Ryan achieved 300 wins around this time. And this is when the time where the pitching staff from Major League teams became a five-man rotation, so um, pitchers didn't have t too many starts to do, deal with, maybe as most as 35 starts. Plus, many pitchers weren't throwing complete games. They were getting out of the game by 6th, 7th inning because relief pitching and stuff like that. Many pitchers did not get decisions if the game was tied or the bullpen blew the lead. And, and also with the decline of 20-game winners in Major League Baseball, 20-game wins help a pitcher if they have a long career try to get to 300 and stuff like that. And since... 1990, after Nolan Ryan got his his 300 win, four more pitchers reached the 300 milestone. Roger Clemens, Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, and then the last one to date in 2009, Randy Johnson. And Randy Johnson might be the might be the last pitcher to throw 300 to win 300 games ever. 
He's the 24th and final pitcher to date. And it's going to be very hard for, for any major league pitchers to get 300 wins and even 200 because now it's five-man rotations and stuff like that with many pitchers aren't getting to pitch complete games. That helps a lot if they win and stuff like that. And there were several pitchers who didn't make 300 wins that some are in the Hall of Fame and some aren't. Every 300 game winning pitcher, with the exception of Roger Clemens and Randy Johnson, are in the Hall of Fame. Roger Clemens probably won't make the Hall of Fame because of his link to PEDs. Randy Johnson's eligible in 2015 for the first time, and he's probably going to make the Hall of Fame on the first ballot. Some of the notable 300, some of the notable pitchers who did not reach 300 games were Tommy John, Bert Blylevin, Jim Cott, Ferguson Jenkins, Mike Messina, Jamie Moyer, and Bob Phillips. A couple of these pitchers are in the Hall of Fame, a couple aren't. The case with a few of them, like Tommy John, if he didn't have that Tommy John surgery, he'd probably be a 300-game winner. If Bert Blylevin didn't play on bad teams, and also the bad teams, he probably would reach 300 went very easily. Jim Cott was heading to 300 wins, but the final few years of his career, he became a relief pitcher. That killed his chances for 300 wins. Ferguson Jenkins was another pitcher, but he started his career in the bullpen, and that affected him to get 300 wins. Mike Messina was a consistent um, like 15-game winner, but if he had a few um, seasons with at least 20 or more wins. He probably would have gone into 300. Jamie Moyer didn't become an effective starting pitcher until his mid-30s, which that probably killed his chances to, for 300 wins. If he was kind of an effective pitcher back when he was in his 20s, 30s, he probably would win 300 games. And Bob Feller, who had a good career, he's pitched when he was a teenager, but if he, if he did not um, serve three years in World War II, he would have been a 300-game winner easily. And the, the, the active pitcher who has the most wins is Tim Hudson of the San Francisco Gi Giants with 208. And he's 92 wins from 300, but he's at an advance. He's, in he's 37 years old. He's unlikely to reach 300 wins. And another pl pitcher Who's, who has 200 wins, who's active, C.C. Sabathia. He's 34 years old. He pitches for the New York Yankees, but he's unlikely to get 300 wins because it's, he has bad knees, injuries, and stuff like that. And it was stuck that he would have been the most likely candidate, C.C. Sabathia, but his knees are going, and it's very sad to see like some pitchers who are on their way to 300 wins for one reason or another. This is a very special club. And I do not think you ever see a major league pitcher win 300 games ever again, ever, because it's just, it's impossible. It's just going to be, we have to have a very special pitcher to probably win 20 games, maybe 10 years in a row, at least 10 years in a row, but they would still be 100 games shy. I don't see it happening at all. And that's just, this is a club that's probably never going to have any more new members. That's about it on that. I'll be back for the third and final video blog of the night. And it's about the v voice of the SEC football on CBS for in Lundquist. And good, good afternoon, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. See you later. And the positive feedback's coming good. And I love positive feedback. And if you want any shout outs, private message me, I'll shout it out for you. Bye-bye, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. See you tonight.